Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the June 6th meeting of the Skokie Planning Commission. Today is an auspicious day. That is the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Hooray. Okay. We'll thank all those who um, served the country on D-Day. Uh, first case, first thing on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the last meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The minutes have been approved. First case tonight is case 2019-14P, Zoning Chapter Amendment Electric Generators. We're talking about standby generators. Yes. Right? Yes, I am. Uh, do you want to hear both cases at the same time? And sure, why not? Oh, then then uh, uh, for, for the record, case 2019-15P is also a Zoning Chapter Amendment, and it is about truck parking. Okay. Uh, and I ask that both reports be entered into the record as written. So granted. Thank you. Uh, the uh, staff looks at the zoning ordinance quite often and sees areas where needs to be modifications. And uh, <coughs> so the village manager reviews those requests and then we send them to our zoning committee who reviews, finally goes over it, and then comes up with a recommendation. And what these two areas uh, came to light lately. Uh, electric generators, we usually use the same requirements for air conditioners and electric generators, but they are different. So just to, mainly because of the noise uh, from a uh, electric generator as opposed to an air conditioner. Recently, the plan commission and board changed the requirements for air conditioners to reduce the side yards, but uh, we had some kind of concerns about that because the generators are much louder. So we're coming up with basically keeping them in the same section, just amending the air conditioner condenser section to add the generators but to indicate that there is a maximum decibel level of 70 dBs, and that's based on what the manufacturer gives us, the specifications, and they have to prove that to us. And then also limiting the hours when they're tested, because you need to test them on a regular basis, and uh, I suppose some people might get up early in the morning and want to take them, test, test them out before they go to work or something. So we want to keep them at the same hours as uh, garden equipment okay. uh, on that on the testing procedure uh, I know a couple of friends of mine who have them and they're programmed to come on right. mm -hmm. for uh, five minutes every every so often like right. every month and the other thing I'm concerned about is the is the emission the gas emission the exhaust yeah. so how is that handled well they would have to be we would see the specs on them and you know they would have to meet general manufacturing requirements is there a, a certain distance from the house that they have to be? No, they, you know, that's the <coughs> problem. We were looking at it, trying to figure out how you would really measure and, you know, the sound at the property line and how far back and everything. So we just decided that we would go by the 70 dBs, which is pretty normal for a generator and staying at the property line and wanting to know what those specifications are under full load. So mm -hmm. that's when it's giving the most noise. Yeah, I'm just concerned about a generator being close to the property line, not f not for the homeowner, but for the neighbor next door as far as the admissions go. Right. Yeah. Well, they're like any other small motor, which uh, which are the big polluters, basically. Well, and, and yeah. Don't forget, it's natural gas. It's not gas. It like still gas. produces <laughs> a carbon monoxide. Well, I understand, but I don't know that it's, it's yeah. the kind of obnoxious smell that you would think about. Mm -hmm. Well, some of us do have gasoline ones. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, Peter, you're talking about like the Generax that these Generac, full yeah, house. Yeah. Those would be well, what about the portables? Well, that would be, uh, well, if, if you have a contractor who comes in and uses it, that's one thing. You know, but uh, we're not really trying to regulate those because that happens all the time. Yeah, I know. I was without power for three days and I was yeah. using portables, so. Yeah. Well, that's Keep the refrigerator going. You know, like a, like yeah. If you have a flood, your power goes out yeah, or something. Yeah. Sure. sure. They'll go down for three days straight. Okay. Yeah. I, I seem to recall from the zoning board that there used to be um, relief requested uh, on, on uh, air conditioning units being too close to the side yard. Yes. Uh, they still get those kinds of cases? They still could. Um, they used to be, I think, exception cases rather than variances. But they would have to now go for a variance instead of an exception. Okay. So to clarify, homeowners basically need to program or run their generators during this time frame. Right, and 
More than likely, the only enforcement would really be if there was a complaint okay, from yeah. a neighbor that it was outside of those hours, and then we would take enforcement action. Okay, good. All right, on truck parking? On truck parking, <coughs> the uh, main parking requirements in the zoning code are for vehicles, you know, for, for employees and guests and, and the occupants of buildings. But um, there also are a lot of businesses that have their own vehicles. And in, in the past, in the code, there are specific uses that have uh, a listing, such as a caterer or might have one space for every vehicle or some other a delivery company may have one per, ve uh, per uh, employee or one per vehicle. But um, we saw that there are some that aren't covered. And uh, in, in one case, uh, this uh, business has a whole fleet of vehicles which take up all the visitor and employee parking and there's really nothing we can do about it based on our current code. So what we would like to do is put in a universal requirement that whenever the company owns, rents, or leases a vehicle that remains on the site that a minimum of one space is required for each vehicle that they have. Uh, we have some quite often where they um, you know, have a fleet that we don't know about at the beginning hmm. and then they take over. Or if the lot. company grows. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. So simple modification, but the zoning chapter changes, and this was written by Steve, who does an excellent job of this. Uh, he went through the whole section, eliminated those areas where it already has a specific parking requirement, such as construction material areas. Uh, newspaper distribution there's there's numerous ones and then put it in a general section at the beginning of that section about required parking with other general requirements so that it'll cover all uses that should have a, a vehicle could be a church could be a gas station it could be whatever there's too many of them to think about until you know they come in and apply and we can ask them those questions so what, what's like the immediate impact of this kind of change? For example, the example that you used of this company with an entire fleet that's absorbing all the spaces in their parking lot. Yeah. They leave town tomorrow because there's just, where do, where do they put their fleet? They've, well, they're right, at that point, you know? Yeah, right now those I don't think we would go after. I mean, because they were grandfathered. They're, they're okay, be, I guess that's what I'm the, going for. All the ones, yes, we'd okay. be looking at them. Yeah. That's right. And how do you determine it's a fleet? I mean, is it a vehicle that's marked with the company name or anything owned by the company? Anything owned by the company that stays on the site. We have some consulting company we used to have that had numerous vehicles from, they were actually licensed in Wisconsin, but they were using them here. And, uh, you know, we just happened to see that they were illegally parked, as we thought. But they uh, were actually a fleet of that, that they're, their employees would go out with those. Is this common with neighboring villages or other villages? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'm pretty sure it is that uh, to meet the parking requirements. Uh, certainly, it affects the other businesses in the area. And the one I was telling you about uh, that is in a shopping, or not a shopping center, but a multi-tenant building and there's two other tenants at least in the building and they can't use the parking because the uh, operator has his uh, trucks there. <coughs> Pardon me? The uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other questions about truck parking? This, yes. I do. I, this is going back to a previous case where we were talking about Walmart and Walmart and all the major trucks that park there and mm -hmm. take up the spaces. Does this have anything? Are you talk about customer parking or, or well, no, commercial? Well, no. This was commercial trucks that would park up. Right. No, this really is different. The Walmart situation is that Walmart just allows truck drivers to park in their lot. Yeah. Oh, and overnight. they live in their excess As they do RVs, spaces. too, mm -hmm. overnight. 
but uh, you know, at a point where that would cause problems by taking up required parking, mm -hmm. I think that would be an enforcement issue also. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about parking? Can they buy out of that? No. You can't. I suppose you could go to the zoning board and ask for a variance. From the no. Uh, in most cases, you'd have to get a variance that would allow you to eliminate those extra vehicles okay. from the requirement. If you're in the downtown, the CX district, or any other of the mixed-use districts, okay. then you would have to pay into the parking fund. Okay. Okay. No more questions? Okay. Getting back to <clears throat> case 2019-14P. I am open for a motion. May I ask a question on that one? Cool, yes. Sorry. Um, so for the generators, when now anyone wanting a generator in their yard will require a permit going forward? We, we already do require them to get a permit. We usually just look at it as a, like an accessory structure or an accessory electrical permit mm -hmm. and, uh, and to make sure that it's wired properly and everything. But we would really like to have a, a code section in the in the zoning ordinance to regulate how they're operated and where. Be the other part I was just thinking about is there are instructions that say how far they have to be from a house, a yeah. window, mm -hmm. and will the village be checking on things like yes. that or leaving it to the contractor? No, that's why that's why we would want the specifications from the manufacturer so that when the permit is issued we would know you know what that generator is and when the inspector goes out our uh, our electrical inspector is very familiar with generators he used to be an electrician so he's installed numerous ones and he's he's very aware of how they operate and their needs so but he but but he is the one who asked that we ask for specifications on each generator okay great thank you that was part of the, <coughs> the permit process wasn't it Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Again, I, Jeff Berman. The motion to accept the staff report is presented. Thank yes. you. Okay. And second by Commissioner Franklin. Thank you. Uh, call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell. Aye. Commissioner Quain. Aye. Commissioner Scott Berman is absent. Commissioner Villages. Aye. Commissioner Franklin. Aye. Commissioner Lopati. Aye. Commissioner Jeff Berman. Aye. Commissioner Matei. Aye. And I'll vote aye. In the case of 2019-15P, zoning chapter amendment to amend park truck parking. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the report as presented. Commissioner Jeff Berman, who had any aye. second? Aye. Second, Commissioner Lopati. <coughs> Lopati, thank you. Uh, call for the vote. Commissioner Mitchell. Aye. Commissioner Quain. Aye. Commissioner Villages. Aye. Commissioner Franklin. Aye. Commissioner Luxpati. Aye. Commissioner Jeff Berman. Aye. Commissioner Matei. Aye. And I'll vote aye. Motion passes. Now, so has, all these have to go before the Board of Trustees yes, sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there anything else before the Board? Not seeing anything. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for attending.